Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. As always my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today I'm gonna show you how to do the box stitch. The box stitch when you look at the loom is this size when we're doing it but when it comes off it's going to stretch a lot out. So you're gonna notice that and it's actually the same wrapping as we're going to continue. So I'm going to show you at this moment how to load your feeder and also how to do your starting slip knot just in case you're beginning to loom it for the first time. So without further ado let me get you started on that and then I'll be right back in just a moment and we'll get ourselves started. With a piece of wire or floral wire or anything like that what you wanna do is just grab your yarn that you would like to do and sandwich it in between the wires right to the end. You're then going to take the other side and insert it into the pen and pull it through and then that's it. So your pen's loaded and this is good to go. So let's begin to load up our loom. Now remember with these flat looms you can go as big as you wanna go so there's much longer versions but this particular one is just a shorter one for demonstration purposes. I would like you to start off with the slip knot so I'm gonna pretend that you don't know how to do a slip knot. So you're just going to take the yarn and take your pointer finger and wrap the yarn twice. Okay, so yarn, wrap twice. So point and wrap twice. Noticing that this is already on, it has to be on before you do this. You're going to take the back one that's on the back of your hand and jump it over the forward. So it's a game of leapfrog and then you're gonna take this new back one and this frog is so excited when he jumps over the other one then he jumps right over top of the finger and that is your slip knot that you're going to start with. So wrap in your finger twice play the game of leapfrog. The back one jumps over the first one and then the new one that's at the back is so excited he jumps over and goes right up over top of the finger and therefore that is your slip knot and that's the one I want you to put right here. So put that on there. So as we get started we're attached to the beginning one right here and the box stitch is actually just thinking about everything in pairs. So you're going to come down and it is gonna be like an E-wrap situation. So you're gonna come down in between the first two and then wrap around and this is where it's going to change the story just a little bit. So when you wrap around you're going to come around the same neighbor and wrap around. Then you're going to jump up and do this one and this one. So you're gonna jump up and make sure that you wrap around. Okay, so you always have to do that E-wrap and then you're gonna do the neighbor at the same time. And now you're gonna come across and do the next two down here. So you're gonna come across and make sure that you can do that circle around. So if you go this way, see, you can't do it. So you have to come in between so you can circle around and coming across and then back up and do the next two in a row. And then eventually you'll come to the other side and you'll wrap around and hold. Now we're going to push these slightly down so just using your fingers or a thumb and it will push it down and then we'll be ready to go then for the next part. So as we begin to go back what we have to do is concentrate on following the exact same path in order to make that. This one here will not have an extra loop on it. So it'll just be one by itself and you'll have an extra loop when you get back there with this yarn in the future. So the very last one that we have will have two loops and you'll be able to finish it. So essentially the first one out of a row is not actually completed until the next row. So following the exact same path that you have you're just going to go in the opposite direction.
right where you are. Make sure you looped it and this is the first one that you'll knit because it is the last one that is wrapped. So I'm kind of pinching it there just to hold it for a moment so that I can take the bottom over the top and push it up and then I can safely let that go. So I like to do everything sequentially so I'm just gonna work from the top and pull the ones over. So it's the bottom one over the top. So the last one does not have anything there so leave it and then just switch over and do the bottom going over the top back in the other direction. Once they are all up and over take your thumb and push down and then reset yourself to go. So this is the first one out so that means that there will not be anything wrapped around that and you will follow the exact same path of what you already know going in the opposite direction. And now this one can officially be wrapped. And then that's the first one that we're going to knit with. So all you just need to do is to go back and forth in the same configuration. And again I like to uh, bring them all up at the same time. So I like to do all the tops and then I will switch it and then do all the bases and then you're ready to wrap again going it back and forth in the same direction. So you're following the exact same path and you'll see that happening when you look down on the loom just like that. That's it for today. Have a good one and we hope to see you again real soon. Now this here is the rib stitch that we talked about. It's also called the box stitch and what we're going to do is that I'm gonna show you a stretchy bind off. So using bind offs in some of this work is that you take all of the upper loops and you toss them over the bottom and then you knit those and then you bind off all here. You can't do that with this because you have spaces in between because there is distance. So when this comes off the loom you're going to notice that this is gonna open right up here. So if you pull them up and over the top and bind off that is gonna close it all and therefore you will not be satisfied. So what I'm gonna do is show you how to bind this off in the correct method also showing the stretchy method which is what you need here. So without further ado let's begin and we're going to start right where we finished right here. The first step is take this yarn and put it so that it's coming from the side that you're going in the direction of. So this direction and it's just gonna be easier if it's sitting there right now. I want you to wrap that around the first one here. So this is the last one that we've wrapped. So we're gonna go into the next one first and we're going to knit that to the bottom over the top. We're then going to pull that loop up and we're gonna put it on the first one where we started and then we're gonna take the bottom of that one and toss that over the top. But before we continue take this strand and wrap it around like that so it comes back to the inside like that. And now you're going to knit that once more. So this is providing an extra chain that you need which is providing the stretch. And we need to come back to where we were when we started on the second one. So just move that on back like that. Okay so let's do the next one. So taking the yarn on the outside and coming back to the inside so it crosses over the outside. So knit it first. Make sure it's taut but not too tight and coming up and over. Now you're going to move that over to the last one that you just were in and move it on over and then take the bottom of that one and go up over the top and before you move it over because that's a regular go on the outside and then come back in and knit once more. That's the extra chain and then you're gonna pull that up and put it to where you were. Okay so the work is now coming off. So come across so you're in the inside and knit first. Take that one and jump across the loom. Take the bottom up over the top and before you put it back there wrap it first 
and knit once more. And then pull the whole thing up and put it over. Okay, so then the next one is right here. So you're just following the path. So you're just coming around. Stay to the inside. Knit first. And then move to the last one. Knit. And before you move it back, wrap. So it comes to the inside again and knit once more and then move back. So that's all you're gonna do all the way down this thing and what this is doing is providing an extra chain so that you will have stretch so that the both sides will equal each other while well, they'll be really close. So you're just coming around. It's better than a bind off for sure like a regular style. So you're just gonna come over and then you're gonna take up, put it up, take the bottom over and before you continue, let's wrap, come back to the inside, provide that extra one and then move back. I'm gonna leave the rest of this row for you. I'll see you on the last two stitches. When you come to the last two stitches, you are still going to just continue and do the last one and then move over and then up over. And this time, because it is the last one, you're not going to do that extra wrap that you're going to need. Instead, what you're just going to do is just trim your yarn long enough that you can throw it through a tapestry needle and carefully pick this one up off the loom. And just pull on it enough that you can get your finger through so that you can put that yarn through there to lock that all into position. And then you can lift this off your loom. So now you have the stretch that it was so you don't have pulling on either side and you're just gonna take this into a tapestry needle and concentrating here and it has a, uh, both sides kinda look the same. So you just wanna take it up underneath the stitches but do not ruin the stretch. So when you just take it and drag it through, pull through but just pull on the project so that the stretch is still there and then go in the opposite direction just underneath the stitch work. Pull on it again and then finally the third time is the time that you're going to stop. So you're just gonna do it one more time and then you're good to go. And you'll wanna do that with your starting strand as well. So therefore you have both sides and they have the stretch that you need and the project should look pretty good on both sides.